This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. We're continuing our discussions on power distribution design. We also want to continue looking at branch circuits with uh, this lecture focusing on non-continuous loads. So as we uh, look at this slide, it shows kind of our progression and where we are in things. We've talked about delivery systems, materials, and uh, now we're talking, continuing our discussions about branch circuits. So now that we've reviewed some of the basic materials used for distributing power, we want to focus attention on some of the basic elements of power distribution. Um, probably the most basic is a branch circuit. So this is a circuit that distributes power to individual loads. So in general, the branch circuit is usually derived in a branch circuit panel from a branch circuit breaker. So we'll now examine some of the different types of branch circuits and how these circuits are sized. So we looked at continuous loads, which is uh, probably the most common is lighting last time. This time we want to look at another very common use of the branch circuit, and that's to supply a non-continuous load. And this is anything that we expect to not be energized for more than three hours. So three hours or less uh, continuously energized is non-continuous. Um, probably the most common uh, load that we'll see in this category would be general purpose receptacles. And so these are used to power miscellaneous equipment, tools, and devices. So basically just like in your home or in your office or maybe in your classroom, you know, just the outlets you see on the wall. Uh, but these can also be other things like mechanical equipment, like HVAC equipment or uh, heaters or kitchen equipment sometimes or, you know, many different things fall in this category. But like I said, receptacles are the, are the primary one that and we're going to focus our attention on that here. But the same principles apply to any non-continuous load. So probably the most common method of supplying 120 volt power under 20 amps is through general purpose receptacles. So these types of receptacles are found in almost every type of building or construction as they are the accepted way that we generally power things. Depending on the voltage needed or supplied and the amperage available at the receptacle, which is determined by the branch circuit size, the type of receptacle is determined by an industry convention that is governed by the National Electrical Manufacturers Association or abbreviated as NEMA. NEMA has established an industry accepted outlet definition that is illustrated in the table in the next slide. So this is a table of the standard NEMA uh, outlet and plug configurations. And so you can see uh, the way we use this table is down the left side is the voltage that we need, single phase and three phase voltages, which depending on what our load might be. And then across the top is the maximum amperage that the, the plug would be, would be rated for. You can see there's a NEMA number associated with these, uh, with the rows. And then in each column, there's double columns under each, each heading. On the left is the uh, receptacle, which is what would be in or on the wall. And then the plug is what actually goes on the end of the cord. It's the cord cap that you would use to go into that plug. So... Some of these might look familiar. Some of them might look pretty foreign. Uh, probably one of the more familiar ones you've seen is this one. It's a NEMA 515R. And so we get that number from the 5 is from this column goes corresponds with the voltage. And then the 15 is, you know, the heading up here, which is the amperage that it's rated for. The R stands for receptacle. So if you say you need a 515R, I know then you need the receptacle. If you say 515P, then you need the plug. So this is the plug that goes into that receptacle. Uh, one that goes along with that is the NEMA 520R, uh, very similar except uh, on the neutral, which the W indicates neutral, which because it's W because your neutral is always the white wire. Uh, you can see it has an extra uh, part of the, of the receptacle there. And so this is what tells the difference between a NEMA 515R and a 520R. They look very similar and you might even, have, you've probably seen both. The 15 is more commonly used in residential applications. So in your house, this is probably what you have. Or if you were in apartment buildings or a hotel room, a lot of times that's what that is. In commercial construction, like the work we do, it's almost always a NEMA 520R. So, you know, in the, in the office buildings or whatever job we're doing, you should expect to see this one. You'll notice that the plug is different for these guys, right? So 
if you need I need something that actually needs the full 20 amps, it will have it, one of its prongs, the neutral prong, uh, rotated 90 degrees. And uh, I have seen these. Uh, the only time I've ever seen one was on a window unit that actually needed the full 20 amps. And so it had the the uh, the different plug on it and it needed the, the 520R. It wouldn't have worked with the 515. And uh, this is usually a dedicated circuit, right? So you can put multiple ones on these on circuits usually, but if you really do need the one that needs the 20 amps, it should probably should be a dedicated circuit, which means on a circuit by itself. So another one that might be uh, familiar to you would be this one down here, the NEMA 10 30R. And so uh, this guy is rated for 240 and 120 volts. And so you can see it has two phases and a neutral. Um, and uh, so this is a three pronged dryer plug. So if you've ever installed a dryer, uh, you might have seen this one. If not this one, then uh, probably would be the 1430R, which is the same voltage and amperage actually, but it does have a ground uh, terminal on it as well. So it actually has four uh, prongs instead of three. So these are some of the more common ones, but uh, you know, depending on what you're dealing with, some of the equipment that we deal with in hangers, Sometimes will require you know one of these plugs or a welding machine. Uh, oftentimes takes a 50 to 60 amp uh, plug. So uh, you know you might run across some of these throughout time, but you know these are the three that you may have seen up till now, or four that you may have seen up till now. <clears throat> so using this table, we can use the desired voltage on the y-axis and then cross-reference this with the desired amperage. To determine the required plug and cap pair needed to supply any load. And again, the most common of these is the NEMA 520R slash P receptacle and plug, uh, as this is what is commonly used for general purpose duplex receptacles in buildings and in some dwelling units. And so that's what these guys are, the 15 and the 20. Like I said, you can tell the difference if it has the sideways uh, opening uh, there. And then again, here's the four wire dryer outlet um, that you can you know, buy at any Lowe's store. You can install and then you know, plug your dryer into that and it, it should work. So in supplying power to these types of receptacles, there are some NEC guidelines and good design practice guidelines that should be followed to provide a safe and effective installation. When supplying general purpose NEMA 520 type receptacles, it's not necessary to provide a separate or dedicated circuit for each receptacle. It is not expected that all receptacles will all be used to capacity at the same time. Therefore, multiple outlets can be fed from the same circuit. If the exact use of the receptacle is known, that is the exact load on each receptacle on a circuit, then this should be used as the load to size the circuit. Otherwise, the National Electrical Code requires that 180 volt amps be allowed for each general purpose receptacle on a circuit. Using 120 volts as the source, which is what we would expect on general purpose outlets, this translates to about one and a half amps per outlet. So when we don't know what the outlets are used for and they're just for, for convenience, you know, down a hallway and all this stuff, we, we allow 180 volt amps or one and a half amps uh, per outlet when we're doing our loading and our panel schedules. So this being the case, assuming again, 120 amp 120 volt, 20 amp circuit, we can now calculate the maximum number of general purpose outlets that are allowed on a circuit uh, at one time. And we can do this by assuming the maximum load that we can put on a 20 amp breaker is 2400 watts. So remember when it's continuous, we have to derate this by 80%, but we're assuming these aren't continuous. So we can use the full rating of the breaker. And so we take this, the maximum number, um, maximum wattage and divide it by our wattage that we have to allow per outlet and this should give us the maximum number of outlets we could put on a circuit. So when we calculate that this equals 13 and a third so of course rounding down because we can't have a partial outlet we see that the maximum number of outlets allowed on a circuit according to the National Electrical Code is 13. So we could put 13 outlets on one circuit and technically be code compliant. But just as with the lighting branch circuits, even though this is allowed by code does not mean that it is a good design practice. In general, most engineers limit the number of general purpose receptacles per circuit to a maximum of eight. And even then, 
Um, that's not always the case, but uh, that's a good general overall maximum. So this has a predicted load on the circuit then of eight times 180 watts or 14, a little over 1400 watts on the circuit. So this provides plenty of contingency. So if someone were to plug something you know, bigger in, that would be okay. So that is assuming there's not a significant demand for electronic equipment. Now, if you're going to be in a place where, you know, there's heavy electronics in there, you might want to uh, modify this, which we do many times. Like if we have a lot of office, a lot of offices in a row, we might just put one circuit per office and there's usually four outlets in there. So it's four per circuit. So when we know that there will be a computer and associated equipment plugged into a general purpose outlet, we typically will then allow for at least 300 watts per outlet because most uh, power supplies on desktop computers are uh, around 300 watts. And so this is a pretty common value that we can use for computers. Uh, we, we will also limit the number of outlets per circuit in areas where we anticipate, again, a heavy electronic usage. There may also be occasions uh, where we know what will be plugged in at a receptacle, such as a treadmill, a coffee pot, or a microwave. Uh, you know, if, if you have enough information from the architect and, and or owner, you know, they may actually locate these on the floor plan that you get from them. Uh, in these cases, we will have the receptacles on a circuit by themselves uh, for these larger loads. So these types of outlets are referred to as dedicated outlets as they have an entire circuit dedicated to them. So just as with the circuit breakers, just as with circuit breakers, there are different types of receptacles that can be installed for different purposes. So we want to look at a few of those here. Uh, first, there's GFI, which is our ground fault. Now we looked at the ground fault breaker, but you can do the ground fault detection and protection at the outlet level if you'd rather do that and that's okay and uh, so we refer to these as GFI outlets uh, you can have what's known as a safety outlet so a safety outlet is an outlet that will not be energized unless um, there is a prong inserted into each hole and so the purpose of this is and where they're most commonly used is in like uh, uh, kindergartens or, or lower elementary schools or daycares, you know, where you might have a kid somehow get uh, access to an outlet and if they find a paper clip and they stick it in one side, then it, it won't hurt them. You'd have to have something stuck in both sides at the same time. So it does provide a little bit of a safety factor there uh, when you have those types of situations. Uh, isolated ground. So these are grounds that have a separate ground connection. Uh, different from the ground connections from other common loads. And so we actually, uh, when these types of situations, we'll have what we call a noisy ground and a, and a clean or quiet ground. And, um, and we, I can show you what this looks like on the next slide, or at least the wiring of that. But in, we usually uh, develop two separate grounding systems. And this is where you're going to have a lot of noisy equipment, uh, which can be uh, anything from different types of motors to electronic equipment. Electronic equipment is in general considered to be pretty noisy. Uh, and then you might have some other equipment that wouldn't tolerate that noise very well. So we'll put in isolated ground systems for that. Another application where I've used uh, you know, pretty eccentric isolated ground systems is in auditoriums. You know, when you've got sound systems, you know, you want them definitely on different groundings from from other units like the HVAC system and stuff like that because it can cre create noise in your, your uh, sound system and uh, things of that nature. <clears throat> emergency, so these there's nothing really special about these outlets, but it's just that they're connected to an emergency backup system. So we usually identify these uh, differently. And you've, you've, if you've ever been in a hospital room, you may have seen these and we'll take a look at these uh, in just a second. And then TVSS, so these have built-in surge suppression so you know instead of getting a power strip that has the surge for suppression like you can buy like at target or walmart uh, you can just have outlets with it already built in so if you know you're going to have some type of equipment that's going to need that protection you might just go ahead and put the tvss outlet in uh, directly so like if you know you're going to have a big screen tv somewhere um, a wall mounted you might just go ahead and put that type of outlet in So let's look at what these look like, uh, just so you can recognize them when you're in the field. 
So here we have a common ground fault um, outlet and it'll usually have a test switch and a reset switch so you can test the ground fault uh, to make sure that it's working um, before you plug something in if you want. Uh, we also have these arc flash. Uh, I didn't talk about those, but um, you do, you know, where we do have the arc flash breakers, you can also do the arc flash <clears throat> uh, monitoring right at the receptacle if you'd rather do that. And so they look like a GFI outlet, but they'll have AFCI stamped on them, usually in the bottom corner, if you can see there. Um, so here is a, a TBSS uh, outlet, and so um, it'll have a, a little indicator there, kind of like on your power strips. So, you know, if, it, if, if you detect that a surge, it usually will trip the outlet out, and that light will come on, and then you uh, push a little button there, and you can reset it. Uh, here's your typical isolated ground outlet. So again, this I don't know if this one really functions any differently, but it's usually connected differently. So you can see here we have our phase conductors coming in, and you also have this yellow line, which this is your isolated ground for the outlet. We still run the normal ground and connect it to the box. So you, you, know, you still want the box grounded and, and the enclosure grounded, but that ground is going to be different from the ground that's in this on the prong on the outlet. And again, this is to try to, to keep that ground clean so that it doesn't have any extraneous noise introduced on it. And then finally, the emergency outlet. Again, this probably doesn't function differently. It just looks differently. It'll be a different color and it's usually marked as emergency so that, you know, if you're in the hospital room and, you know, you want to plug something in a monitor or something that doesn't need to lose power for patient monitoring uh, in the event of power loss, you plug it into that instead of a normal outlet.